So is this quantum computer happening? Are we when it will happen? So how long? Uh, <laughs> this is this is the million dollar question, and you know that it's likely more than a million dollars. I guess. <laughs> yes. In the well, so so what is happening is, um, of course, there is steady progress made mm -hmm. when building these these quantum computers. Mm -hmm. So so um, every few months. We, we read a new announcement by some large company. Well, IBM is building, uh, Alibaba is building, Meta is building, Microsoft is building. So there are many specialized companies that are building quantum computers. And, and, and they're still trying to figure out what is the correct like physical hardware because mm -hmm. there are several candidates for, for this, this best uh, quantum effect carrier. Um, so there is still a lot of, of work to do in figuring out, out that. And, and the hard piece to figure out is actually how do you make this, um, this uh, construction scalable? Mm -hmm. So we, we know how to build quantum computers of a few hundred, perhaps a few thousand quantum bits, as they are called these days, uh, which is still by, by no means large enough to break uh, standard cryptography. But it may happen that, that physicists at some point figure out how to scale this thing very efficiently mm -hmm. and, and, and make like million quantum bits, a billion quantum bits, something like this. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, the computers we have today in our phones, watches and laptops, they are already can do large things. Like, and, yeah. and the quantum computers are still at a few hundred Yes, well, the, the thing is that the classical bit and quantum bit are not really that one-to-one -one comparable. So, so well, a few quantum bits potentially can compute pretty crazy things. And again, you will you will have to separate um, uh, the physical quantum bit mm -hmm. that that is carried by some photon or or, or whatnot, and uh, a bit that you can actually use in computation. Well, the, the trick is that uh, quantum bits or, or the quantum bit carriers mm -hmm. are physically very unstable. Mm -hmm. So the quantum is, is very, very, very small. It's, it's, it's basically a, a small quantum of energy that is out there somewhere. It, it fluctuates, it's, it's waves, whatever it does. Uh, it's very hard to control it. You can, you can control it for, for perhaps, I don't know, a m microsecond, something like that. And the, during this lifespan, maybe milliseconds, I don't know, don't quote me on that. Uh, but, but during that very, very short lifespan, you already need to perform all this computation. Mm -hmm. and, and it may happen that, that this specific quantum bit does not survive this long. So, so the way you approach this problem is you use many quantum bits and hope that at least some of them will survive for, for the duration of, of, of this computation. And you would use what the um, computer scientists call error correction. Mm -hmm. So, so this is this is done in, in in classical communications as well. Your your mobile phone talking to the talking to the base station. Well, there is also noise. So, so in order to survive this noise, they will also use error correction. So, they will actually send more bits than absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. And a similar thing is happening in quantum computers as well, mm -hmm. on on a different scale. So, so you will you will perhaps need a thousand. Mm -hmm. um, physical bits for one logical bit, but but that's again very much uh, area of, of development. I recently heard that well, there is a group of researchers who claims that that they've they've built fifty logical bits out of three hundred uh, quantum bits. If true, this would be very very interesting. This would perhaps show us the path towards scaling this thing up efficiently. We we, we will have to wait and see. Okay, there's. At some point, and this doesn't seem correct or believable, is uh, the the myth was um, shared that a quantum computer looks at all the possible solution at once and then picks the right one. This is likely not the case, right? I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. This is a good a bit of myth busting service right there. Mm, fair enough. So. Physicists are working on it. There's companies, there's startups, they are... There's a lot of money poured into yes, this thing. and they need to justify that money by showing results, <laughs> even if there aren't really any sometimes. So uh, there's quite a bit of uh, scaring people with quantum computers. So realistically, uh, I've seen... I've, I know there is no, not a number. Nobody's willing to say that it comes in 5, 10, 20, 50 years. Well, it, it comes in 15 years, and this has been said for 25 years, so... <laughs> Precisely. So there is um, what I what I saw was a good graph which said that uh, if you asked a, a number of people, uh, like in a TV show, that what year do you think a quantum computer will come in, 
then it was uh, like a parable. Yeah, it's, and it's a kind of a grayscale yes. or, or orange scale, whatever it and was. And the average in the paper. was in 10, 20 years. So, yeah, at, uh, it, it, I think it said uh, that that uh, enough many people thought that in 10, 15 years we have a 50% chance of having such a computer. That so would, it had many parameters. That would break, for example, the Estonian digital signatures or let's break the ID card again. Or, or, or some other classical crypto algorithm like RSA 2 kilobits, which is like a standard benchmark for these things more or less.